Today, we'll look at how to get started with Teleport SSH server access. Now, Teleport consolidates SSH access across all environments. And while there are multiple ways to enroll a server, including automatic AWS EC2 discovery, we're going to manually enroll a server for this demo by running a simple command. It's this easy. First, log into your Teleport cluster. Then go to Add Server. And today, I'll be enrolling an EC2 instance, and it's Amazon Linux. So I'll choose that option, and it gives me a command to run on that instance. So let me copy this, and then connect to the instance. And I'll paste that command to enroll it. And once that's done, I should be able to go back and see that the wizard here has successfully detected this new instance. So I'll click Next, and then I'll select or create the OS users that you'll use to connect to the server. It's a Amazon Linux instance, so I'll choose root and EC2 user. Click Next, and I can test the connection. So I'm going to test EC2 user and test connection. And the wizard's complete. Your server has been enrolled. So click Finish and browse existing resources to see all of your servers available. And the reason I'm allowed to see all three servers here is I have a role that allows me access to all servers. So if I go to Management and Users, you'll see my Teleport Admin user has the Server Admin role. So if we take a look at that role, that gives me access to all servers. And this can be limited down to certain labels. But since I have these stars, I have access to everything. And then as far as users I can assume, I can assume the root user and EC2 user. So to log into my server, I'll go back to resources. To log into the server, I just go to connect, choose a user. I'll click EC2 user. And I'm connected immediately here in the UI. Here you also have the ability to upload files to your server or download files from your server. So to upload a file, I can click this up arrow, choose a file from my computer. How about this screenshot? And my file is uploaded. If I do an LS, you'll see my file available here. And let me just remove this file. And often engineers need to download log files for local inspection. Let's download the dnf.log file for information about some package updates. Now, in addition, other engineers can also join your session. So if you go back to the UI and go to Active Sessions, other teammates will see that you have an active session underway. They can click Join, and they can join you as an observer, which is read-only access, or they can join as a moderator, which they can view output and terminate the session, or as a peer, where they can view the output and send input, so work alongside of you on that server. This feature is great for pair programming, training a new engineer, or having a second set of eyes while debugging a complex issue. And all sessions in Teleport are included in our audit log. And in fact, you can play them back to see what commands were executed. So here you should see the ls and me deleting that file. But we know a lot of engineers would rather use their terminal than have to log into a web-based UI. So we have the Teleport TSH CLI to do that. So your engineer would need to log into the cluster and they would use again the TSH CLI. So TSH login, my proxy and my user. And Teleport has WebAuthn integration, so no secrets or passwords needed. Going to authenticate with my Touch ID. And I've logged into the cluster. From here, I can view all of my servers, TSH LS. I should see my three servers. And to connect to one, I just copy the node name and run TSH SSH. I'll use EC2 user at that node name. And again, your servers are consolidated across all environments for quick access. I can also search for servers based on their labels. So TSH LS, and I have a label of environment equals test on two of them. So this should show those two servers. And you can also execute commands on multiple nodes that share a label with TSH SSH EC2 user at, and then the label. So AWS environment equals test, and then I'm just going to run ls. The first server had no files in that folder, and here are the files in the second. And again, all of this is based on the role that you're given in Teleport. 
All of these actions can be limited with Teleport's built-in RBAC system. And finally, we'll look at access requests. So imagine you have a contractor who periodically needs access to your servers, but you don't want to give him permanent access or persistent access. You want him to be able to request it just when he needs it for a limited amount of time. Let's demonstrate how this works in Teleport. So we have our contractor user here, and we've created and assigned a contractor role. This role grants the ability for the contractor to request temporary access to the server contractor role, which is set up for contractors to access our servers. So let's log in as our contractor using our GitHub SSO integration. So TSH, login, choose our proxy, and for auth, we're gonna put GitHub. Hit return. Notice that there are no secrets or passwords used in the authentication process as Teleport integrates seamlessly with your existing identity platform. And once logged in, our contractor can create a request for that role temporarily so he can access our servers. And to do that, he types TSH, request, create, and for the roles, he wants to access the server contractor role. And the reason is he needs to perform a few updates. So he'll create the request. And now an administrator on the team can approve the request. Let's use a private Slack channel to review and approve the request. You see here, we have a new role request. The admin simply needs to click the link and approve the request. And our contractor gets a new updated certificate where they can view and access our servers. And that access is valid for one hour only, which is the duration set in the role. And it's that easy to manage SSH access across all environments. Be sure to visit goteleport.com and download and try it out today.